So this video is about overcoming shiny object syndrome because I've been talking about shiny object syndrome in my work for a long time. I think it's the main reason why my business didn't grow faster in the first year. It was completely because of shiny objects like here and there and there and here. And then like a year later, I figured out, oh, okay, hold on. Let's focus on who I help, what my mission is, um, less on what my branding is gonna be like, which is still important, but just not like a year's worth of time needs to be spent on it. Shiny object syndrome is so real right now for people with access to the internet. And we really, really have to focus on, you know, getting things done that are productive. What's really hard to do, I've always found, is because there's so many cool ideas, like especially if you're an artist, you're a creative person, you have a ton of different ideas, like at any given moment. So choosing which ones to work with so that you don't like flutter around from this project to that project to this project and then not really end up anywhere is to really focus everything around your mission statement. That's like the main, most important thing with your business, your company, your art, like what is the main mission that you're trying to accomplish? And you should be able to say it in one sentence. The, the smaller the sentence, honestly, like the more simplified and, and cut down to the truth you are. It, it, the, my first mission statement, oh my God, it was like, um, it was like two paragraphs long and that is not a good example because I didn't really understand what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a lot of different things. So be sure to focus all of the projects and tasks that you're working on with your mission. So ask yourself when you go to start a task or a project, does it directly align with your mission? and hopefully it directly aligns with it and not um, indirectly because there's a lot of things that, that can indirectly align with your mission. So focusing on only direct mission stuff is the way, the main way to avoid shiny object syndrome. So the other thing that can keep you focused, um, really, really focused is who do you help? So you can say, oh, well, I help anybody that wants beautiful art on their walls. Get more specific than that. Even go into like creating an avatar and um, actually this book right here, Vlog Like a Boss by Amy Schmittauer, I think she's um, Amy Landino now. She was saying how you maybe even, and a lot, of people, a lot of people have talked about this, but maybe even give it a name. Give this person a name and, and focus all of your content, projects, tasks around helping this person. Figure out where they really need help. Um, just because you're an artist and makes paintings doesn't mean that you can't uh, give people who don't feel creative um, a way to get started or a formula or uh, tutorials on this really cool technique or you have something teachable that can help or entertain or inspire other people and you should focus all of your content and projects and, and products around that. I do think that there's a lot of business owners that have been in business profitably for a long time, but they're still kind of stuck in shiny object land. And I do think that the reason for that is that they really haven't nailed down the mission statement and who they help. And, and the third thing is to niche down. So if you look at what's out there right now in the market, pretend to be your ideal customer and you're just perusing on Google and you or wherever and you find someone that you would be easily be confused with or something that looks kind of similar like yours um, you have to resist the urge to be like well mine is way different because of this small detail just think about it from like a random person's perspective that doesn't know you or your work or whatever who would they get you confused with look at what is out there in the market and then really have a niche that differentiates you from everybody else in the market. So when someone's like, hey, why are you different? And instead of just saying like, you know, I use more pinks than the average artist, you, you can you really, really narrow down and be able to tell them what really makes you different in terms of your place in the market. If you feel like you don't really have 
a skill set or something that's super differentiating about you, spend a few months just really developing some sort of skill or style or technique or um, way of doing things that, that does make you different. And then enter into the market with that. So spending a few months developing your niche is, oh my God, it's literally it's just such a good use of your time. You really need to have a niche. And a lot of markets too, there's gaps where people, the your ideal customer doesn't really, there's not really an exact, like they're missing something. There's gaps in the market. So your job is to really try to find these gaps and then fill them and make something available that was not available before. What do people really want or need that they can't really currently get much of? So writing out your mission, who you help, and your niche, and really owning in on it and being able to boil it down to one sentence is really, really, really going to help you focus. So once you start really narrowing in and focusing on your mission and who you help and your niche, you're going to start to develop this like tunnel vision. And once, I would say once your family and friends out of concern start reaching out to you, calling you obsessed with your goals, then you're probably doing something right. In my Bold Business for Artists freebie, which is a three-part video and PDF series, I go further into detail, and that link is below in the description. So keep at it. You got this. And that is about all I have to say. Have a great day.